we're going to go immediately to Detroit, and this is always, for me, one of the highlights of TCT. I cannot tell you exactly what they're going to do, but I can tell you it's going to be different, and it's going to be spectacular. <laughs> so here we are coming to Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit with Bill O'Neill, oh, Adam, so. the team. Um, let's shift our, our focus. So, Bill, Adam, welcome to the main arena again hey. at TCT. Very good. So our third case today is that of a 59-year-old female. She presented to us with evidence of mechanical hemolysis. An echocardiogram showed severe degeneration of her surgical aortic valve with severe aortic insufficiency and severe aortic stenosis. So this is clearly a very challenging patient with challenging anatomy and only magna of only 19 uh, millimeter label size. You can see the LVOT and annulus area. Very small root, very small LVOT. High risk case for coronary obstruction. We call it coronary obstruction, but it is actually sinus <coughs> obstruction, risk for sinus obstruction. The sinuses are effaced, around 25 millimeter. Left main is very low. You can see measurements of uh, VTC that is narrow, that is low, uh, small. Below 4 millimeter is considered high risk. You can see a video showing how the inflow to the valve, to the, to the sinus, yeah. will be occluded if we deploy a THV device inside. It's a small surgical valve. Small surgical valves uh, are favorable with supravalvular, supraannular THV devices. Here you can see an uh, uh, illustration. He's got a difficult situation right now, at, at least anatomically, for a transcatheter procedure. And she's yeah. still only in her 50s. And so we plan to do a procedure called basilica, and then to help the patient prosthesis mismatch, if she's stable, we will fracture the valve and then go on to put a, uh, do a valve valve tablet with a 23 Evolute R. So the idea of basilica is to split the leaflet in front of the coronary artery at risk of obstruction. And uh, here you see a mitral flow split with a sapien and a core valve in. It's okay. a um, transfemoral procedure using two six French catheters through the um, femoral artery. We take them either side of the aortic valve. And then we take a guide wire and electrify it and poke that through the base of the left coronary scallop in this case and uh, snare that in the LVOT. We tighten that guide wire loop, so only about two millimeters of guide wire is exposed when we electrify again and pull both catheters upwards, lacerating that valve in the center. Uh, we align that up to the coronary artery fluoroscopically and by echo, and then implant uh, the valve in, which should splay those leaflets either side, um, allowing blood to flow in. And on the left, you see that coronary artery is positioned in the same place uh, anatomically, but would have been completely obstructed. It seems so obvious. I'm, I can't imagine why we hadn't done this years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is the fourth year in a row that we're showing you a, a procedure uh, uh -huh. developed at the NIH. Um, so it's been a fun ride. Bill Joffer is amazing, and, uh, you know, I, with Bob Letterman. I mean, you guys have a wonderful collaboration, and uh, right. just, you know, hats off to you. And uh, so stuff. Rob wanted to be here, but he's actually the sponsor of the upcoming IDE, and so he's prohibited from being here. So he's not, but we wish he okay. was. Yeah. And the other thing I'll tell you, by the way, there have been seven done uh, worldwide. So you're looking at number eight here, and we have number nine planned for uh, later in the day. So that is a EBU guide from the okay. left leg. I'm sorry, from the right leg with an IM diagnostic, a 125 IM diagnostic to point down to the base of that scallop. Right. And then through an ipsilateral six French, also there's a multipurpose guide with a 20 gooseneck snare in the LV just to receive the wire. There is a safety wire just to help in case the multi flew back, so there's an 014 sparticore particle down there. So that's the equipment that's in. And then go to the next so this picture. This is all really off the shelf stuff. This all is off the shelf. It's very complicated. And so that was, a two, that was what we call the 2-1 view that shows the left coronary, like typical iliocranial in your right, uh, angiography. Right. And then when you go to the next picture, then we go basically <laughs> perpendicular to that. And now our catheter, as you can see, is lined up right in between, right at the base of that scallop. And then when we've confirmed that, here we are electrifying the tip of the wire with what we call standard transcable technique. That's an estato wire inside a peak jacketed piggyback. And so we just burn at 30 watts to get through the leaflet. <laughs> And then we grab the snare that confirms we are in the LVOT, not in the left atrium, any other place that we don't want to be. And then through a series of maneuvers, we um, will make the loop. And this is just a picture to show we're relatively centered on that 
cusp, uh, go back to that 2-1 view. We're inside the frame. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to tighten everything up. And here's where we stand, ready to basically perform the scalp. We have two catheters in the right. That's going to be the basilica part. On the left is an 18 French cook sheath, uh, ready for the valve delivery part, the BAV part. And there's a pigtail just in the ventricle through that side. So we're ready to go after basilica. Okay, and how much power do you use to burn the leaflet? I, 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 it can't to be 20 or 30. To cross, we use 30, and to burn, right. we use 70 watts. 70 watts. Oh, wow. yeah. So okay. if you can see the image live right here, at 2 o'clock is the left main coming in. And yeah. my pointer is showing the wire crisscrossing the left coronary cusp. Uh, and this white part that my wire is going across is that Pierce and uh, Basilica across the left coronary cusp. Confirmed. Perfect. Beautiful. Mm. So the hemodynamics now are uh, 133 systolic, 53 diastolic. Let's see how it Hold will everything. behave after yeah. we do the scallop laceration. I'm going to inject. Hold me on. That's, that's it. There okay. it is. And let's watch hemodynamics here. So you see we've split that leaflet. Maybe Didi can show you the split. If we can get the confita wire now, we'll simply go in. There is the no other change side. in the Here's your button. split I, I don't know if you were, the camera was on my hands, but really not a lot of force. Here's your color flow across the split leaflet right here live. Mm -hmm. And let me show you the leaflet tips. Do you see the two <coughs> leaflets now, portion of it? One here, and then one here, there's a hole. I'm gonna step on four. Go ahead. So we've done, uh, uh, like I said, seven patients okay. so far. Most had AI, but one um, did have AS. They all seem to be hemodynamically tolerated. I think even though we make a linear tear, as the leaflets move up and down, they come close to co-apting. And so you don't seem to see that hemodynamic collapse that you would expect. Right. None of them are the hemodynamic instability. Adam, here's your 3D tear. That's your coronary cusp opening and closing. At two so can we have the balloon, guys? Yeah. That's, that's, that's a really impressive. Here. Yeah. I think the echo shows beautifully the leaflet closing in diastole, which is yeah. uh, why you're not getting severe AR. Right. The <laughs> gap between the splitted leaflet will happen when we put an oversized mm -hmm. THV inside that surgical sure, valve. Sure, Before we yeah. do that, it the, the split. Much further. Yeah. yeah. Okay, pacer on at 180. 180. Yeah, yeah. A bit more. Yeah. Right. Wow. Okay, let's see the model. Pacer, pacer off. off. Yeah. For everybody who's been, been giving me uh, grief about my concept of fracturing up front, you know, the pressure's good here. And I think, again, if particularly if you were going to put an Edwards in, uh, you could just deploy it in its normal fashion. I know there's some talk about recoil and things, but I think in the attempt to preserve these leaflets as much as possible, that's been our preference. So it's fairly calm. Hemodynamically, again, she's got a fair amount of AR, but she's doing fine. Right. Her EKG, apart from the VT event. Can I turn the light off? Fine. And she's not done any hemodynamic support. No. Forward pressure of it. Just a little forward. Just a little bit. Okay. Uh, and it's all released. Very nice. Perfect. Nice. The first would be nice to see if there's flow in the yeah, left let's main. Didi, would you show left main flow? Well, we'll, we, we'll try and get a picture here for you, but let's just say we can't. Are what what I can tell you is Basilica, Are you blood pressure okay? I think, has a, has a role for, for these valve and valve procedures for patients that you think are at risk of coronary obstruction. I'm not sure that we know what happens to these stents that are chimneyed out long term. You have a young person like this that may develop coronary disease in the future. I think it'd be easy to just get through that split, just go right down to the neo sinus. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then I'm, I, my, you know, my concern is that if and when these tavern valves, a lot of which are up at the STJ, and you know the leaflets come all the way up there, you know, 10 years from now, who knows if they all start to degenerate as the surgical ones do, I think this would be an option to allow valve and valve or valve and tavern valve and a lot more people that may be at risk. Yeah, that's a good point. I can see a lot of uses of this. That was really beautifully demonstrated. We're going to be really interested to see what the gradient is. And the coronary flow. Yes. Yeah. But that's sure. impressive right there. Wow. That's very good. Yeah. 
Yeah, index good, no gradient. And the, the yeah. concern in this yeah. case was, of course, with the fracturing, not knowing how far it was going to move. Yeah. You don't get a second chance at it, and we think that this technique, Basilica, has been safe so far and uh, doable in a variety of different valves. And if we can show that it's safe, then maybe on those borderline cases, you know, why not do it? No, I think this was just a beautiful demonstration we'll, we'll once in again, the, in the Adam. Pullback and then we can take a picture quickly. So, I mean, it's just to summarize, <laughs> I think a very difficult clinical situation handled expertly, 30 minutes with completely new technique, basilica uh, uh, and valve cracking a with a beautiful result in, uh, again, a, a challenging scenario. Thank you, so, just so, just I, I want to congratulate better. my colleagues and friends at Henry Ford and um, sure. uh, Adam yes. in particular, your group and your kind of uh, experimental structural group. Um, for all you, you contribute to what we do, and uh, I think we learn something every time we watch cases from Henry Ford uh, and your entire team. Um, uh, um, uh, once again, just a beautiful transmission and demonstration. Thank you, Adam. Well, you're, you, Adam. you're welcome. Well, that was slightly breathtaking. <laughs> Kind of weak in the knees Learning late about the birds and the bees Falling in love and want to be set free Playing ball at the age of 13 Everybody's going up with the dream I never noticed what could happen to me Time flies when you're walking the streets One minute got you holding an ace The next minute got you falling on your face I mean city is a nasty place Only a rat can 